I saw this discussion going on on Instagram and I want to know if you consider this a red flag. So this person says, I went on a date. I ordered fries and a salad. He said to the server, does the club sandwich come with fries? The waiter said, yes. He ordered the club, then he canceled my fries. Do you think this is a problem? Do you see this as a red flag? Do you see this as a man that is just conservative with his money? Way in. So for some additional information, he didn't just give her these fries. This person says, according to the original thread, he canceled hers and still wanted his side. He wanted them to share the fries that came as a side. To me, this sounds like a red flag and it sounds very, very cheap to do this. It sounds very cheap because at most, even at a upper, I mean, even at a restaurant that's kind of expensive, how much could a side of fries be? Like five bucks? Why would you do this on a first date? This is a terrible way to make a first impression. At first, when they had posted this on Instagram, they didn't have the full story. So some people were saying, oh, this is cool. He's just being smart with his money. Some people are like, this is not a big deal. But let's look at some of the comments. Chanel says, it's absolutely a problem. What he did was save her time and energy in finding out he's a cheapskate down the line. She dodged a bullet. Thanks a lot. Um, then this person says, oh, nah, this is only the tip of the iceberg. First is the fries. Next, he's bringing a sandwich to their date for them to split. So he doesn't have to come out of his pocket at all. Uh, Fussy Kira says, oh, wow, how controlling. This is how controlling behavior begins. Okay, so Goddess of Healing was wondering, was he going to give her the fries or was he suggesting they share? It's not even a suggestion if you're just splitting them without her input. But then Black Love Exists, that is the person who posted this, says, according to her, they ended up sharing. She left before the check came. He didn't stand up to say goodbye. So he saved a couple of dollars by um, ordering fries, well, canceling her fries, but then the whole point of the date is to, you know, get to know somebody. Maybe it's an audition for the second date. And he blew it. <laughs> he blew it. He could have literally just gone on a date by himself just to, or just order him some food if he was going to act like this and run off his, his companion for the evening. Jules Management said to the lady saying this is not a big deal. It is, in fact, a major one. This man made a decision about her meal without talking to her, assumed that they could share food. How does he even know she likes him like that and decided that something she wanted was not necessary without discussion? Yes, it's just fries. To the wrong man, this is the first test, accepting it as a sign that you are able to be controlled and manipulative. Don't assume he's a good guy on a first date. Assume the worst until proven otherwise for your safety and security. Too many women ignore glaring red flags in the beginning and then later say, I didn't know he was like this, except it's here on the first date. If you look beyond this narrative of the good guy who just wants to save money, focus not on what you would do on a date alone and more what a man you are just meeting should do to demonstrate his interest and make you feel safe. From that context, this man was wrong and it's not just fries. This is absolutely spot on. Plus, remember, you are an adult woman, not a child that is learning how to order from a menu. You are not a child. You do not need another adult that to come in and tell you what to order. Don't put up with this simply because the other person is a male with a pen. You are not a child that needs to be dictated to. And then this woman says, thank you. Shar says, great explanation. And then a man comes. He says, I assure you, it was just fries. It didn't say he shared the fries either. You type all of that over some fries. And that's the thing. Men will not recognize red flags in other men, especially if they are a walking red flag. Now, um, during the course of this conversation, this tweet thread, the official Brandon Campbell, they, they let him know that he did, in fact, order and then attempt to share with the woman. And he still brushed it off and didn't really consider the other side of the equation because they don't really care that women un understand and know what red flags are. They would rather us ignore them, even though they're the ones that are telling us to choose better. Egypt Star says, yeah, no, a man restricts your food at the gate. He's a red flag. Gold Digger says, you can't be serious. 
And Angie says to Gold Digger, we obviously need more details, but yes, unless we are talking about a child is giving cheap or controlling. Egypt Star responds, even a child, y'all decided to go out to eat. That's an indulgent activity. Indulge. Tigger says, don't cancel my order without talking to me, period. Um, Epiphany says, who cares about a man who so-called um, knows how to save but not communicate? That's raggedy. So I'm going to leave it there. You see that there is a mixed bag of comments, but some of them are a mixed bag because they didn't have the additional information that he didn't just give her the prize, that he was, in fact, attempting to share them. So what do you think about this? Join the conversation, like, comment. Here is a tweet thread from a man talking about male friendships. So Meatball Time says, I've been feeling very undernourished in my male friendships recently. I think there is something just kind of wrong with the default mode of male socialization communication, something men aren't taught about relating to people. Now, I don't know if you guys remember a few months ago, I had posted this video where this older man in a cowboy hat was talking about what women are doing wrong and how it is impacting men and men's self-deletion rates and, you know, just women and how we relate to men is just off. But men do not really dive deep into their feelings and their socialization to each other. Like it's very surface level, like they can talk sports or cars or getting nooky, but they don't really talk about the deep stuff that's impacting them. And that's something that they need to work through. So that's the reason why I'm going to talk about this man's thread. He continues with, I realized several years ago that I could spend hours talking to my male friends and not learn a single thing about them. I always am the one that has to ask personal questions. And when I ask guys about their divorce or whatever, a solid third of them are like shrug or hello. Um, he continues with, I mostly just pity men at not sure how I feel about my divorce levels of emotional intelligence. They're not dumb. They're confused. They lack the tools to introspect. They were never taught. The emotions are just going to sit in the pressure cooker in their heart, maybe forever. Society tells men to suppress their feelings. Women demand go to therapy, but female modes of expression are alienating to men. All the other men in your life are just as confused because if they talk about the NBA isn't helping, they are out of ideas. No wonder guys feel nothing. I do want to go up to here. It says society tells men to suppress their feelings. Men tell other men to suppress their feelings. Men are the ones that created these hard boxes where Feelings and emotions go into the boxes of the female gender, whereas men are not allowed that leeway. So patriarchy has harmed men. And until these men actually verbalize what has happened to them and why they are not allowed to express actual feelings that humans have, they are going to be stuck in this pressure cooker of built up feelings because they cannot break out of it until they acknowledge where things are wrong with this society. He says, where can men go to learn how to feel things and support each other? Fraternal orders like the Masons or the Elks, dead. Church or religion, dead. Strong, vulnerable men don't exist in the media. Clubs, third spaces, military, dead, dead, dead. Men unable to feel their feelings live confused lives, inflicting others, especially women, with the burden of feeling things for them or compensating for their lack of total, I mean, their total lack of self-awareness. We need dedicated spaces for men to build emotional intelligence. Where are they? Well, who's going to build them meatball times? Because if um, you can't expect women to do it, but then men brush off men's concerns. Ricardo says tangential, but I'm convinced that half of the reason getting friend zoned as a teenager drove me up the wall was that as a guy, I had no notion of the degree of investment women expect in their inter intrapersonal relationships, even when they're platonic. Because women do e invest emotionally. We support other people. And so I don't know if men have the capacity to actually have a symbiotic relationship that is on a deeper level with a woman without expecting something in return, um, like nookie. <laughs> they typically see women as a whole, as a, as a receptacle 
or their baby batter. They don't see us as full actualized humans. So it's hard for them to relate to us as friends, yet it's hard for them to relate to other men as friends. So they end up jacked up. Artie says, this is an increasingly common sentiment among the very few close male friends I have who have confided in me and other female friends on some very intimate issues for which they probably craved male advice and support. Meatball Time says being emotionally available is a superpower these days and women need to pull back though if the if the men are not reciprocating if they are just dumping on you without any reciprocation that's not a friendship and they need to find a professional to pay and then to talk to um this person says and to not miss oh he says to him and to not misuse the information given or received, and to only use it to help and benefit and grow and heal each other is the absolute best thing out of humanity, regardless of circumstances. He expects this, but does he give this? And I think that many of these men have trust issues because they are untrustworthy and they are projecting. I wanted to get to this comment from Robbie. He says, glad you have the courage to come out during Pride Month. Because men talking about feelings and emotions means that they are men who love men, basically. This, this is what, this is society that tells men to hide their feelings and not pour into or have deep and supportive friendships. It's this type of thing. It's not society. It's other men that keep men from going deeper into their feelings. Um, Robbie also says, the only nourishment I get from my male friends, we get drunk, talk, sh and call each other, every um, each other every offensive name possible. This is not what makes a real friendship. This is not what it is. And then when something is really wrong, you don't have anybody to actually talk to because you haven't created that, that foundation. Anyways, I thought that this was interesting. It was definitely interesting to see a man be introspective about things. And I really do hope for the sake of humanity that men break out of the notion that feelings and emotions are just for women. We all are human and we have a wide range of emotions and competition, anger, um, passion, that kind of thing should not be the only feelings and emotions men are allowed to feel. Jump in the comments. Let me know what you think about this one. Don't forget to like, comment, and share. This is definitely going to be a dad that ends up in the old man mojo dojo casa house with none of his kids coming to visit. Aaliyah says, worst father award goes to my dad. Mind you, he knew a month, um, a month in advance about my graduation. So it looks like the day before her graduation, she sends him a text message saying, are you coming to my graduation tomorrow? And he says, I would like to. So he knows about it. She's already told him about it. She told her auntie about it. We know that from some text messages I'll show you in a few minutes. And then Aaliyah responds with K. And then the next day she says, why didn't you come? And he says, we will talk if you want to. She says, can you answer the question? If not, then there isn't anything to talk about. He says, bet. She says, I don't think there's any excuse or reason of why you didn't come to my graduation when you yourself said you wanted to come and you had all of the time in the world to clear your schedule. I'm very disappointed and disgusted, but I can't say I'm surprised. I truly don't want anything to do with you after this. He responds, I don't care. That's why your mouth, bye. And you wonder why I don't give two Fs. I don't give an F, Aaliyah. I don't give an F. I don't care about your graduation, about calling needy and checking on me or anything. F you. He says this to his oldest daughter. She says, you need God. He responds with, you need God. And then she responds with, and you wonder why none of the kids want to spend time with you or call you. You act like a child yourself. You having kids on top of kids and can't even take care of the ones you have now. You mad at me because I don't call you you are my father. I shouldn't have to call you for us to speak. You can die for all I care. You missed my graduation, your first child and only girl. You should be ashamed of yourself and you need a major reality check. You jump female to female with kids, fine, fine on to yours 
when you can't even support and show out for your own. So he's just having a bunch of kids. He doesn't take care of anything. He's totally going to end up in the old man mojo dojo casa house. Now, this girl, Aaliyah, who just graduated high school, she posted this on the Twitter And I guess because of some of her language, people are like, oh my God. And she's like, y'all, I graduated high school, not the eighth grade. But tell me why this person that's right here, she blurred it out. But this man sent her a pin pic. He says, F your father, you deserve this. Like literally, why? Why are men? Okay, then she goes on to say, since somebody's swearing up and down, I'm not telling the whole truth. I've been talking to my aunt about this. He knew about my graduation And I saw him earlier that week and we discussed it. Then there was no discussion that he wasn't coming or he didn't come. This is her talking to her aunt back in April. She says, hey, my graduation is May 31st, 2 to 5. I'll have my tickets and location on the 24th. And she says, send location information. Is that May 2nd or May 25th? She says, graduation is May 31st, 2 2 p.m. to 5 p.m. I'll have more information on May 24th with the location. She says, oh, okay, I'm excited for you, baby. Are you excited? Have you applied for any colleges? Are you having a graduation party? All right, so tomorrow at three, here is the picture of the tickets. My mom and grandma will have you guys tickets and I don't know if my dad is coming. The auntie says, okay, I'll be there and I'll make sure your dad is with me. Okay, so still, again, another woman responsible for picking up the slack where her dad is falling down. All right, so then Aaliyah texts her aunt, why didn't he come? The auntie says, I'm not exactly sure, baby, but we will talk about it afterwards. And she says, okay, that's fine. And Aaliyah gave the auntie the screenshots of him saying this. Um, And the auntie says, wow, Lee, I'm just speechless. And Lee says, it's okay. That is a coping mechanism to say it's okay. Obviously, at 18 or 19 years old, It is not okay to see that your dad is literally just a sperm donor. And this is the reason why a lot of adult children are going no contact because they should go no contact, especially if a person hasn't poured into a relationship. That's one of the reasons why I'm always saying pour into the people who have poured into you. This this sperm donor, this deadbeat doesn't deserve any love or appreciation from this high school graduate. And now people must be coming for her. She says, anyways, as much as it feels great to get this off my chest, it'll always be someone downplaying or being negative. Yes, this is a big situation to me because it was my graduation and he said he was coming. And no, I don't care about airing it out because I'm not the only one dealing with it. Exactly. Air them all out. Air out deadbeats. Stop being shamed into silence. She continues with, it's tiring hearing the same, I'm sorry, from your parent and peers that didn't go through the same thing. And no, I don't give a F if it'll um, be the topic of someone's conversation. Good. This needs to change. It absolutely does. Stop having kids that you have no intention on pouring into. And especially having multiple kids if you didn't pour into the first one or two. And I guess some people are like all this over a high school graduation. And she's like, yes. And I don't even know why people would downplay this as if this is not a major milestone for some folks. And she says, and to address this, it's always been my mother and my grandmother there for me. My dad went on to have six plus kids after me and neglected them after making promises to everybody. If he was the supportive man y'all making him seem like, he should have been there. Now she says, earlier in these things that she is the firstborn and the only daughter. So he is a deadbeat to a bunch of boys. So imagine what those bunch of boys are going to grow into if they have a daddy like this. I'm not going to read all this, but some man jumped into her DMs to try to downplay her fe- um her feelings and try to make it seem like, you know, she needs to do better. You can read this on your own. I'm going to end it with her feelings because her feelings are very valid. She says, if he slaved to put food on my table, which he didn't, when he spent most of his time selling drugs or in jail or with other women and their kids, he would have been there to see the accomplishment he helped support. But he wasn't. What he's done for me is make empty promises. She says, I'm not biting the hand that fed me. I'm biting the head hand that's been leading me on to believe that he would finally step up after 18 years and be a better father. And if I'm embarrassing him by calling him out on his 
then so be it. She says, thank you to all the people who congratulated me and sent me private messages. I'm trying to get back to everyone. And thank you to the people who came together and sent money. Literally everything is appreciated. This is, it's sad that the community, the virtual community has to come together to be the support system that some of these parents are um, dropping the ball on. But this girl deserves to share her story deadbeats deserve to be outed and we need to talk about this because it is harming it, it is creating a cycle of harm and her mom and grandmother and auntie they are the ones that deserve everything and this is the reason why mother's day will always be extra busy and why father's day you can go sit at any restaurant anywhere and get in just like that <laughs> That is why. Um, but y'all go ahead, weigh in. Let me know what you think. Like, comment, share. If you made it this far, go ahead and hit subscribe. <laughs>